Welcome to nonstopneuron.com, where learning medical concepts is as easy as watching cartoons. In this video, we will talk about the refractory period in cardiac muscles. Let's get started. To control the rhythm of the heart, there is a special system that generates impulse and spreads it all over the heart. Once an impulse passes through any area, that area becomes unresponsive to subsequent stimulation for a short period. This period, when the impulses cannot re-excite an already excited area, is called the refractory period. Before we see the types of refractory periods, let's quickly revise the various configurations of calcium and sodium channel. At the resting membrane potential, they are in a close or resting configuration. It's like they are ready to run. During the upstroke, they are in an open configuration, allowing the passage of ions. It's like their active running state. After that, they stay in an inactivated state for some time. It's like they are taking a complete break from all the businesses. Then they start to return to the initial close state. And eventually, all of them are ready to run again. The important thing to note here is that the channels can take open configuration only from the resting state. The inactivated channels cannot open directly. First, they have to take a resting configuration, and then only they can open. It's like sleeping boys cannot start running right away. They need to stand up first. Now, there are two types of refractory periods. Effective refractory period and relative refractory period. The effective refractory period is seen during most of the plateau phase. It is the same as the absolute refractory period seen in nerve and skeletal muscles. During this, no stimulus can re-excite the cells. The reason is that during this, the sodium and calcium channels are in the inactivated state, and they cannot be opened directly from this state. The duration of the absolute refractory period in ventricular muscles is 0.25 to 0.30 seconds, and that in atrial muscles is comparatively shorter, at about 0.15 seconds. So this was an effective or absolute refractory period. Now the relative refractory period. At the end of the plateau, the channels start switching from inactivated state to a closed or resting state. From this state, they can be opened. However, not all the channels have recovered yet. So although it's possible to stimulate the cell during this period, it requires stronger than usual stimulus. The duration of this period in ventricular muscles is about 0.05 seconds. At the end of this, almost all the channels return to a resting state. So now the cell can respond to impulses in the usual manner. Talking about the importance of the refractory period. If there are any pathological ectopic pacemaker foci generating impulses, the refractory period minimizes the stimulation of heart muscle cells from those abnormal impulses. In simple words, it helps maintain the normal rhythm of contraction. Also, it prevents tetanus of cardiac muscle in such pathological conditions. See, tetanus is basically a sustained contracted state of muscle due to a very high frequency of stimulation. Tetanus of cardiac muscle means a permanent systole without any diastole. This is prevented by the refractoriness. So this was all about the refractory period in the heart muscles. Now let's have a quick summary. The refractory period of the cardiac muscle refers to a short period of time when the heart muscle cells become temporarily unresponsive to electrical signals. The absolute refractory period is seen for most of the duration of the plateau. And relative refractory period is seen for a short time after that. The refractoriness prevents the stimulation of heart muscle cells by ectopic impulses. And it also prevents tetanus of cardiac muscle. That's it for this video. If you have come this far, please consider supporting me by liking, commenting, and sharing the video. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.